The game show from Clockworks is an open source module gaming console that you put together yourself. Now there's one thing that I've realized after having this guy for about two weeks. This isn't a device that you can actually just drag and drop stuff to. It actually requires a little bit of skill. A skill that I haven't used in years and something that I haven't used all that often. And that is pretty much command line and some networking. I'm going to show you exactly how to put emulators and ROMs on Game Shell. So sit back, relax, let's get technical. Welcome back to another episode of We Get Technical. And before we get into today's episode, I'd like to say let's continue to let me spend my money before you waste yours by hitting that subscribe button. But on today's episode of We Get Technical, it has come to my attention that there are other people other than me having an issue putting emulators and ROMs onto the game shell. This is not easy by no means. A lot of other devices such as the Raspberry Pi just require you to drag and drop stuff to a SD card. Now on this, it's not that simple. You just can't hook this up to your computer via a USB cord and just drag and drop. It actually takes some skill, some command line skill and basic networking skills or knowledge. And honestly, there is a forum, the Clockworks forum, which I'll leave a link in the description down below. It also comes up on your startup screen on your game shell. But for someone like me who has a hard time following directions, I had a difficult time understanding for the most part. It did take me a while to actually understand it and I had to go to other resources outside of the game shell forum and that's because for some odd reason I personally was having an issue with RetroArch. I was downloading the core but it was not showing up in the emulation folder. Honestly I didn't know that until I actually understood how to connect to this and how to use command line to get to the specific folders. Now back when I was younger I did do a little DOS but I haven't used DOS in years and I barely touched Linux so I haven't really used the terminal. Now I'm not going to say the forum didn't help me because it did. I just had to use common sense and I had to keep at it. Persistence really worked for me. But I also had to use outside sources as, as to another website to download the actual emulators in order to get it onto the emulation folder. The first step that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go into the settings and you're going to want to connect to your Wi-Fi. Go into your settings, down the Wi-Fi, that's my Wi-Fi there. Now you're going to hit the B button enter, it'll let you put in the password. Go over to Tiny Cloud and it will tell you your IP address for this actual device. You're going to need that in the next coming steps. Let's actually get on the laptop here or your PC. All right, before we get in the whole command line and networking side of putting ROMs and emulators onto the game show, there are a few software that you have to download. And first off, Windows does not come with an SSH program built in. Now on the forums there are a couple of options that they tell you. I personally went to search for my own and I found this software called OpenSSH. Now there is no newest version of it. The development of this software stopped a long time ago. As you can see on the screen, we have XP in 2003 for Windows, but the software still works. You can choose from whichever options you have on there that fits your setup. I actually downloaded this one right here, which is OpenSSH 7.3 P1-2. Now, as you can see, it's going to give you a warning here that because it's a .exe file with most likely a lot of stuff will have viruses. I personally did not have an issue. You can go ahead and scan this file with your virus program. Now here is the file right here. There's a .exe. You're going to want to click that. And you're just going to want to go through the steps of installing this. I'm not going to do it because I have already done it. So now obviously if you're on a Linux PC, which is probably going to be your best option, 
Linux automatically has SSH supporting it, so you'll just want to go to the terminal. Alright, as I said early on in the video, I had an issue with RetroArch downloading the cores, which are the emulators. It didn't seem to download them to the emulator folder, and I did not realize that until after I finally figured out how to do this, and I realized that the emulation folder only had the pre-installed emulators in it and not the ones that I downloaded from RetroArch. So I went and searched on the internet for another way to get it and I came across the Retro's website which seems to be the designers of the emulators. Now as you can see here's your Genesis one, now that's the one we're going to be using. You're going to want to download that, you'll right click save link as. Now I created its own folder, I suggest you do that as well so everything organized and you know where it's at. Now after you get it downloaded, you're going to want to go into the folder. This stuff is pretty self-explanatory, but I'm still going to explain it. And you're going to want to right click. Now obviously this is a zip file, so you're going to need some sort of unpacking software. Extract here. And that's right there is going to be your actual emulator file that is a .so that's for the source code now let's get into the actual process of getting those emulators onto the game show now that you have an SSH installed on your Windows PC which I said this will be easier on a Linux PC because you already have this equipped in the terminal you're gonna want to go to your your command prompt. Now if you don't have an icon like I do up on the taskbar, you can go over here to type here to search. In the search bar you just hit CM. This is pretty similar to the way you would do it on an old like 95 or 98 machine. Hit enter. It will open a command prompt. Now in the command prompt you're going to want to type SSH then CPI which is the username for it hit at and then you're going to want to type in your IP address for the game shell. Now this will differ between different game shells. Your game shell will have a specific IP address which you can find in the My Tiny Cloud on the main menu of the game shell. It will tell you all the information, the password, the username. You hit enter. It's now going to ask you for a password which is CPI. This is, that is going to be exactly the same for all game shells. Hit enter. Now this is a pretty similar screen to what's in the game show when you start up. Now you're logged into the game show. Now you're going to want to get to the folder where you actually have to put the emulators in or actually put the configuration file that loads the emulators to the main menu on the game show. So you're going to want to hit CD it's going to be slash home. Now I got this off of the form. And then from there it's going to be CPI apps. Don't forget to hit the forward slash every time. Or is that the backslash? I always mix them up. You can see them on the screen. You got apps. And then from there it's going to be launcher slash got to see if I remember this correctly now at any point if you can't remember you're gonna see it right in your face but if you're doing this like I am from memory you might forget what the next folder is if you hit enter you then can hit directory and as you can see it's gonna be the menu folder so you're gonna want that so CD menu and I think as, see, you can keep going with this just in case you forget where you're going. This is just going down the folders in command line instead of an actual GUI menu system. Now we're in there. Now you can do this all at once. Just I can't remember it off the top of my head and I don't have it written here. Now when you first get into that folder, the retro games, you will only see name 
M-G-B-A-N Nestopia. As you can see, it has S-N-E-S. That's because I've gone through this process before, and I created that folder. So now since we're doing the Genesis, we're probably going to want to create a Genesis folder. Now you're going to want to go ahead and make a directory in this folder. So that's M-K-D-R. And then for the sake of it being Genesis, I'm going to call it Genesis. Then if you hit directory, you will see that now you have a Genesis folder in there. Now we're going to want to do CD Genesis. And now we're in the Genesis folder. And this is where we're going to want to make the action.config file. If you head over to the forum website, form.clockworkpi.com. Now we tell the launcher what to do if you hit the created shortcut. You're going to want to type nano action.config. Nano action.config. All right, and that's going to create a config file, and this is an action file. You're going to come to a text-based software. You are now creating a file. So here comes in a little bit of programming. All you're going to do is pretty much write what they have here on the form itself. first time I did this, the first time I recorded this, I typed in the wrong thing. What I want you to type in is what's on the screen right now. ROM equals forward or backslash. Anyway, slash home, slash CPI, slash game, slash Genesis. Then hit enter, you're going to type in rom underscore so equals slash home slash cpi slash app slash emulator slash genesis underscore plus underscore gx underscore libretro dot so. Now this line is pretty much telling the game shell that this is where the emulator is. And that top line is telling the game show and the emulator exactly where those ROMs are going to be. Now the third line is EXT equals gen, comma, bin, comma, zip. And those are the extensions of your ROMs. On the next line, this is your fourth line. You're going to want to hit launcher equals retro arc space dash L. That's pretty much the program that's going to be loading these emulators. And on the fifth line, it's going to be title equals Genesis ROMs. Now, I'm pretty sure that this is what it's going to be called in the menu. You have to hit ROMs. I left it just Genesis, and it did. I think that that might have been the problem. Originally, it would not load any of the ROMs. And then you're going to want to write on the last line, the sixth line, SO underscore URL equals HTTPS colon slash slash raw dot. Just write this URL. I'm not reading the whole thing. This is the URL that I used or copied from the other action.config files that are in the other emulator folders that were preloaded on the game shell. Type this exactly to a T the way it looks. Type Control X. Now, after you hit Control X, once you hit that, it's going to ask you if you want to save the file. You're going to click Yes. Hit Enter. Then it'll ask you if you want to write to file action.config. You hit Enter again, and then it will pretty much save it and exit out of that text file. Here we go in the emulation folder, and as you can see, you have your Game Boy Advanced, you have your Nintendo, and you have your SNES emulators in here. Now, I have downloaded SNES Genesis and some other emulator. I can't... DOS. It was DOSBox. Neither of those are in here, and RetroArch automatically is not putting it into this folder. Now, I didn't dive in there and see if maybe it's downloading it to another folder. Maybe I'm doing something wrong and it's not exactly downloading. I don't know what it is, and I'm sure other people are having the same issue. There's going to be a back way of doing this, and this is how I did it. And I'm going to show you right now. This is the same way that you're going to go ahead and put emulators inside of a folder. Before moving the emulator to the proper folder on the game show, you're going to have to access the SD card on the game show and actually move your emulator 
over to the game shells SD card now you should have early on in the video downloaded your emulator and put it into a specific folder on your PC so what you're gonna want to do is go to the search and you're gonna want to type run Now from the run app, you're going to want to type in slash slash and then your IP address for the game show, which as I said before, you can get on the my tiny cloud app on your game show. It's just tiny cloud. I don't know why I said my. And then slash games. It should come up and ask you for a password and username. And that is CPI CPI. You hit OK. It should open up the games folder on the SD card and move this file. This is the emulation file. This is the actual source code for it. And all you want to do is just drag that over. To the games folder on the game shell it'll copy it over all right since we're here i guess i'm just going to show you where you dump your roms onto the game shell and this is the sd card i'm going to open up the genesis folder as you see i already have a bunch of emulators in here all you're going to want to do is drag and drop your emulators from another spot on your pc into this folder and that's where that action.config file We'll know to look for these emulators and load them up. The next step is to move the emulator to the proper folder. So what you want to do is you want to go to CD slash home slash CPI slash games. As you can see, you got your emulation file right here, the .so. Now you want to move that to the proper folder, which is the way to do that is to use MV, which is the move command, move, and then type in the actual emulation file or emulator file. I don't know why I keep saying emulation. Make sure you type it in right as always. Make sure everything matches. And then you're going to want to type in where you're moving that it is home slash CPI slash apps slash emulators and that should move it in order to confirm that we're going to want to go to that folder and make sure it's in there and the way to do that is what we've been doing the whole time And as you can see, right here, Genesis plus GX, the emulator is now in that folder. And now the last step in the process is, just like the form says, make it pretty. And you're going to want to put an icon on the home screen. Now I'll leave a link in the description down below to somewhere where you can download icons or you can make them yourself. I suggest if you know nothing about it, just use the icons that someone has provided for you. They look exactly like the ones that come pre-installed on the game show. The first step is to drag those icons into the games folder just like you drag and drop the emulator in there and here's Game Boy just to show you what it looks like. It is this, it's a transparent image. It has to be a PNG because that's the only images that will be transparent. Now it appears that unfortunately that pack that I downloaded didn't even come with a Genesis image. Just for the sake of showing you, I'm going to use this Kirby one right here. So once again, we're going to want to back out of all this. You're going to hit CD slash enter, enter. Now we're back here. Now we're going to want to go to where the image is at. It's on that game folder again. So you're going to want to type CD slash home CPI slash games now you're in that folder you hit directory and as you can see there's the Kirby image now at some point I'm obviously going to change that to a Genesis image but for now it's going to have to work 
Now you want to type in mvgenesis.png. I changed the file to Genesis just in case it doesn't want to work. And you're going to want to type in the folder you're moving it to, which is slash home slash cpi slash apps slash launcher slash skin slash default slash menu slash game shell 20 retro games. And then hit the enter button. And that should have moved it over to that folder. All right, now after you get all the proper files moved to the right folder, you get the action.config programmed right, you get the image put into the folder so you can have a nice icon like this on the menu system. You got to restart the game show in order for things to take effect. So you're going to want to go to power off, hit X to restart. The system will reboot once you get in the menu system it always seems to go right to retro games so you want to hit B for enter and as you can see Genesis is now in the menu yeah I know it's got the Kirby logo that pack that I downloaded did not have like I said a Genesis icon it seemed to be all Nintendo related icons I'm gonna go on the internet and try to find one or I'm probably just gonna create my own I can do that in Photoshop but either way once you hit enter as you can see it will load up to the Genesis ROMs and in here are your Genesis ROMs let's load Sonic the Hedgehog as you can see everything is loading And there you go, you got Sonic on there. We could go ahead and play. And as you can see, I've played this before and there does appear to be some slowdown. You can hear the music is choppy and that might just be the specific emulator that I used. On the forum, I did see someone say that. Well, that's adding emulators and ROMs to the game shell. Now at first it might seem extremely frustrating and a long drawn out process, but as soon as you get used to it, it doesn't take that long. Once you start to get used to the commands, the syntax, and the actual directories that you're using, it will start to speed up a little bit. If I have to suggest something, please Follow my directions in this video to a T. Don't use the URL that they use on. On the forum. I don't know. For me, it doesn't seem to work. I just happen to use the exact URL that they're using in the config files that were preloaded on the game shell. If you have any questions or get stuck anywhere, please leave your questions down in the comments below i will be also possibly making a video on adding the playstation emulator to this it's probably the same exact process but you're probably going to have to use isos instead of the rom files it is also going to be a full-on review of this up at some point so if you have not hit that subscribe button do go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you found what was contained in this video to be of some value as always Share amongst your friends, your social media, and the rest of the internet. If you liked what was contained in this video, as always, hit that thumbs up. If you didn't, you can use that other button. And if you're interested to see more from the Wee Beam channel, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button.